All right, this is my new dry cell. You can see it's running right now. And the one thing I just want to note about this is I saw D3's video a couple of months ago where he was disassembling one of his dry cells. And I noticed the pattern on each one of his plates, even though they were sitting in a square shape, the pattern on the square shape looked like a diamond on a square. So that made me think the next dry cell I build, I'll just twist everything 45 degrees and make a diamond cell out of it and see if that utilizes more plate space. And so far it's actually been doing really good. One thing that I really want to note about it though is on every other dry cell I've built, uh, let's pretend it's actually sitting like this. If it was like this, I would always see a line across here where the, uh, where the water level would drop down to the exit hole. So you would be missing all this plate space here for electrolyzation. So by turning it this way, I don't know why, but everything wants to stay flooded. Uh, the cell is flooded right up to here. I don't know if you can see, it's just this little top corner that's got the gas shooting through. And it's the same on both sides. I'm gonna walk to the other side here quick. As you can see, it's the same on both sides. It just stays perfectly flooded and it doesn't matter. Right now it's at about 14 amps. Even if I have it up 25, closer to 30 amps, it does the same thing. It just doesn't drop the water level. So I'm very happy about that. And uh, that's it. So if you're building a dry cell and you're using the, uh, the EBN method with the uh, uh, equalization holes in the bottom and the top, then just twist the whole thing 45 degrees and have it sit like this and you'll see a very big difference as far as flooding anyway and a lot more production because of the extra flooding so anyway that's it actually one other thing I want to mention was I'm using these neoprene gaskets that I've bought now and they are working perfect so far I don't see any leaching or any problems with them uh, no problem with the KOH mixing with them so that's another good thing so my mini dry cell that I'm putting in this system is uh, is being changed over to these neoprene gaskets right now I just bought it by the by the sheet you can see a whole bunch of it I got a big long sheet of it actually so that's the two things neoprene gasket and diamond shaped dry cells that's what's going on lately and one other thing I want to mention these two uh, battery charges are going to be running separately all kinds of different units that I'm going to have on here within a week this is the 13 plate electrolyzer, this is a 25 plate electrolyzer, these are the two wet cells that I like to use and this is going to have the normal dry cell, it's 19 plates right now and I, I always use 5N configurations, it's 5N3 right now um, so I'm going to have the mini dry cell which is actually apart right now in pieces and the plates are soaking in vinegar and water um, so we're going to have the dry cell and the mini dry cell running on one side and the two wet cells on the other side and we're going to be combining all these because my goal is to run these machines on cold start I don't want them running for 10 minutes and an hour or whatever it is to warm them up I want to, it to produce right off the first 30 seconds that it's running I want to be able to use the gas so that's my goal and then we are going to have a lot of cool experiments uh, to do with cooking and heating and all kinds of stuff so look out for that in the next short little bit I got delayed because of that virus I had it was out for two weeks but I'm back now and uh, there will be a lot of videos coming up in the next little bit I'm just trying to perfect a back flame arrestor I'm also going to order one from uh, Steve from install guys and that'll help in the experiments just to keep everything safe that's it.